going on guys welcome back to another super string video in this video i'm taking you guys to what i like to call the super string boot camp because i'm going to be teaching you guys some need to know stuff to make you a better super string player it doesn't matter what you're trying to do on this game whether you're doing it as a casual or a hardcore whether you're a pvp or just something to have fun with. Whatever it is that you want to approach this game, I'm going to make you have an easier time in the game and give you guys a generalized understanding through these boot camps, okay? The biggest thing is it's going to help you formulate your own team comps probably a little bit better, or maybe it's some stuff that you probably didn't know you could do before, and how to counter some characters and some stuff, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to be talking about in lesson one, status changes and special effects that's right that's gonna be the whole purpose of this video is status changes all right we gotta start with the basics okay if you understand the statuses in this game then you'll be able to better formulate strategies on the characters that does sad status effects right so with that being said let's go ahead and get right on into it so we're gonna try to categorize everything as turn stagger buffs and debuffs and special all right let's talk about turn stagger Turn stagger is essentially the staggering of an enemy unit. It's going to be essentially what I like to call a turn waster, all right? Buffs and debuffs, I want you to treat at face value. It's just a buff, and it's just a debuff. Nothing more, nothing less. Special, I want you to treat a special as when you see it happen. This is just the, the make or break for that match. If somebody's doing something that is considered special, then you need to really be on your P's and Q's and pay attention to what you're going to do next, all right? So let's go a little bit more into detail of what falls under all three of these categories, okay? Alright, what causes the turn stagger? You're going to have your stun, your freeze, and your sleep. Stun will basically stun the units where they can't take any action. Sleep will do the exact same thing as a stun. Freeze does the same thing. However, if you choose to attack them, they will take more damage. It's very important that you keep that in mind for later, okay? Semi-turn stagger, so it doesn't completely waste their turn, but if they get hit with confusion or silence, they can only use their skill one. The difference between these two alignments right here is that confusion, they don't have any control of their character and they will attack a random unit. Silence, you still have control, but you can only use your skill one despite having control, okay? Let's talk about the buffs in the game. So you have your status effect increase. This is going to increase your base stats for a max HP, attack, defense, etc, etc. You have vigor, which I want you to treat this as an AoE base stat increase, okay? It increases multiple base stats at once. Terminator increase, probably the most important buff you're going to need in this game. Because speed is all that matters, and I tell you right now, Terminator increase can save your behind in this game. Um, rejuvenation is basically a HP regain. A shield is a massive defense buff that basically makes it to where you will do no damage to that person almost whatsoever. You can still do damage, but it's gonna be a long winded, drawn out match if you don't have the CP. I mean, even with a out gear CP person versus a low gear CP person, if that low gear CP person uses the shield, they ain't taking no damage, bro. Um, effect Resist bo Boost. Uh, effect Resist Boost basically helps you resist any debuff effects, essentially. And I'm pretty sure there's like a Effect Boost to like do better debuffs. I just forgot to put it here. But yes, you can do both the opposite. You can resist your buffs and do the opposite. Um, you have your Debuff Block, which essentially helps you block all debuffs. It's very, very simple, okay? These are all the buffs that I want you to treat as just a buff okay it's, it's not if this stuff happens it's it happens yeah i'll tell you right now there's nothing you can do with somebody buffs it doesn't matter it shouldn't change the strategy whatsoever now when it comes to debuffs there is a lot of debuffs status effect decrease base stats again it's just a decrease of your base stats curse is pretty much the opposite of bigger okay so bigger Again, AoE base stat increase. You gotta have the opposite. That is gonna be your curse. It's just lowering multiple base stats at once and it is stackable. I forgot to mention that Vigor is also stackable. Slow is gonna be reducing your speed. Poison is gonna be a dot damage over time. It's gonna cause damage over time. 
shock. I put in parentheses HP and defense to help me remember that shock will cause HP damage over time and lower your defense. I think it's by like 6% or something like that. Um, we're not focused on the percents by the way, we just want to focus on what it mainly does. Debuff resist down will make a unit make a unit more susceptible to debuffs. Debuff chance down is going to make it more harder for them to inflict a debuff on you. Then you have turn meter decrease. Just like you can increase the turn meter, it can be decreased. Uh, damage received plus. So this is going to increase the damage received. This is basically the same thing as being frozen almost because frozen also increases the damage received. So on top of a frozen damage received and that together is a dangerous combo because I think it's 20%. Then you have Bleed. Bleed is also a dot that causes HP damage over time. And most units in this game will do more damage if you have Bleed. Reduced Heal will reduce the healing that's received or Rejuvenation, all that kind of stuff will be lowered by a lot when you have Reduced Heal. Buff Block will block all buff effects, okay? Alright, let's get into Special. And we're gonna do this from top to bottom, okay? I'm going to start with Oblivion. Oblivion is the most important effect under Special. Let me repeat that. Oblivion is the most important effect on this game. I'm talking to you. You need to know how to use Oblivion because Oblivion disables passive skills. A lot of your problems that you might be having in the early game is all those units that come back to life and clap you. Oblivion. They can't do it if they don't have the passive in involved, okay? So Oblivion is very, very important to deserve those passive effects. Taunt is essentially a skill that tanks use to tank. They tank the damage. Now, these next two are pretty special, so... You have Escort. Escort is the same thing as Protected. Now, what is Protected? Protected is essentially a skill that protects all ally units from incoming attacks. However, the person that cast it the Escort effect or the Protect effect will still take damage. However, they will counter you after they take the damage. The only difference between Escort and Protected is a unit that uses their Protected effect will only take 25% of the incoming damage on the allied units that got attacked. So let's say you do an AoE on the entire team of four. All three of those units will not take any damage except for the person that cast it protected. Escort effect is the same thing as protected. However, instead of it being 25% damage, they take 25% more damage, meaning that they take 50% of the damage that the ally unit received, okay? Now, guard is essentially the same thing. The only difference is guard will not uh, be a counter. So they won't counter you However, I think that's hit like 40% of the damage of the allied units. And the allied units will take damage, unlike the escort and protected effect, where they don't take any damage at all. A guarded unit will still take damage, but it's only like 10% of the damage. So 10% of like 50,000 damage, it's like it's not that much. So they pretty much aren't taking any damage whatsoever. Now, immortality. Immortality is basically, that unit cannot fall below 1 HP. So Immortality is basically they cannot die. They can still take damage, they can still be healed, they can still be stun locked, they can be all well, whatever. They just, can, they just can't die. Now, Bomb. Very, very important special effect, okay? A Bomb has a 50% chance to stun. Most of this stuff happens after you are bombed and you attack another unit, okay? So if you get bombed, if I bomb you and then you attack me, there is a 50% chance after you attack me, because you have the bomb effect, you will get stunned on your turn. Let me repeat that. A bomb has a 50% chance to stun you when you attack another unit, okay? So very, very important. Now you have the burn effect, which is basically like bleed almost. Burn is just basically damage over time. Um, a lot of units will do more damage based on the burn effect, okay? Then we have a very important one. We have invincibility and invulnerable, okay? They're the same thing, but for some reason this game, they word it like this. They word it, the words in this game are so weird. It's basically the same thing. It's invincibility, 
They can't take any damage. They're immune to all skill damage. They don't take any damage whatsoever. Revive. Essentially, it's a resurrection. It revives the unit back to life. You have Dispel. Dispel basically will dispel buff effects. Now you have Stealth. Now Stealth is very special to where the unit we're going to Stealth. You cannot target that unit, okay? Damage Reflection. Very important one as well. Damage Reflection will basically reflect any damage back at the attacker, okay? So if you do an AoE on an entire team that's Damage Reflection, then you will, they're going to reflect a percentage of the damage back at you, okay? Alright, now that you know what all the status effects in this game does, we're going to go ahead and give you guys some strategies to counter some of this stuff and better utilize it in your team comps, okay? Alright, so this goes into the tips portion of everything that we talked about. So I'm going to give you guys some tips on how you can better utilize everything that we talked about. Now we went into detail on all three of these things, right? So here's the thing. Let's talk about turn stagger again, okay? Turn stagger is your solution to everything in this game. I don't care what it is. Stun, freeze, and sleep. Any unit that can do these three things are the most dangerous units in this game as far as I'm concerned. So any unit that is a turn stagger is the highest priority when you want to take that when you want to take out somebody on the enemy unit's team, okay? If they can do any of this stuff, take them out because they will essentially waste your turn. You waste their turn before they can waste your turn, or you try to take them out so that way it's not a threat. The way I want you guys to treat your buffs and debuffs from now on, don't think about it. If somebody gets a buff or you buff a unit, it doesn't matter. I mean, you may be able to do more DPS, but it's it doesn't matter. But you get debuff or buff, don't be scared about it. It's, it's, it's nothing you can don't don't worry about anything in this category, okay? Now the special category, which we're going to go back to that slide. How can you use turn stagger to get out of this? Because turn stagger is your solution to almost everything that I listed here, okay? Turn stagger can help you with what? Turn stagger can help you with the escort effect, the guard effect, the protected effect, the immortality units. It can help you with invincible units or the big invincible shield where they take zero damage. Um, it can also help you with a stealth, although you can't really target a unit in stealth unless you remove the stealth by attacking. So stealth can be removed if you do an AoE attack because the AoE is going to attack everybody automatically. So let's say a tank taunts your whole unit. If you have somebody that can AoE, they can break through the taunt and still attack a unit in stealth. So that way, you can still target them on another AoE or you can remove the taunt and then taunt them however you want to do it. However, turn staggering is going to be important for these escort and protected effects because you will not get countered if the unit that does a protect effect is stun locked or they're frozen or they're asleep. You want to do any damage to the other units, but they will essentially be turn wasted because they can't do anything back to you. Another way to deal with the immortal unit, Oblivion. Most immortal units trigger their immortal immortality via a passive effect. So if you disable the passive skill with the Oblivion, then you don't have to worry about them becoming immortal anymore, okay? So it's very important that you know which units can hit Oblivion, so that way you can use this on immortal units and then effectively kill them before they go into it. Now, I did tell you guys that the bomb effect is only a 50% stun. That is incorrect. The bomb effect will do damage after a set amount of time, okay? Some units will set their bombs off with a certain attack, so they can't set the bombs off immediately. They'll bomb you once or twice, and then they can set it off at the same time. So they can do massive damage. I just want you to be aware of that the bomb effect can cause a stun, which does help in matches, okay? Um, how do you deal with invisibility? Again, turn stagger. Waste your freaking turn until it wears off. It's the easiest way. All right, guys, so you guys are probably wondering just how you can utilize some of the tips that I gave you. So again, the biggest one being the Dispel Effect. Um, the Dispel Effect can remove buffs, so that can get you out of that immortality. Uh, we're going to go over which units in the next video can trigger set buffs. I'll just give you guys a little demonstration. I'm going to utilize this team here. 
that would be the easiest team to demonstrate this on. I'm just gonna take a quick unit such as my son Mina. And I'm gonna double turn myself. And we are also going to show you guys how you can stun lock. I mean, Lulia is a good semi turn stagger, but the actual turn stagger would be best come from Kim Bao Chun. Uh, let's see what else. And then I need a unit to trigger their immortality, so let's just use this guy to make it easy. Strong DPS. Just to show you how important it is to understand your status effects, alright? But I know that immortality is the biggest thing that everybody has a hard time with. So we're going to trigger Wansul's immortality. Now mind you, the immortality is considered a buff. We're going to trigger... Uh, I don't want to trigger Kansuki because she actually taunts me. Uh, if you got a stun lock, somebody that can turn stalker you, you can't just kill them. I'm not going to do that, but... If I didn't want to kill them... I could just uh, waste her turn, but we're actually going to go into uh, Sun Mina. So if I didn't want to turn stagger an uh, immortality unit, or if I didn't want to just hit them with the oblivion effect, you can let them go into oblivion and just dispel the buff. So as you can see, Sun Mina slapped the hell out of him, and then his immortality is gone, just like that, so... Now keep in mind that people like Kansuki, she gets immortality, but it's not considered immortality. She basically just revives and she can't die. So I mean, stuff like that, it won't work. So stuff like that, you can still lock them. I mean, this is gonna be a one shot or not, I don't know. So she triggered her uh, passive effect, but she didn't counter me because I still locked her or I turn her. So that's just one example of what you can do to get rid of some of those nasty characters that does stuff like that. But we're going to go into more detail in the next boot camp where I show you guys a little bit more that you can do. Now, how you deal with like Kawuka's shield and the guarded effect, that stuff you cannot remove with Dispel. Um, uh, what you want to do for stuff like that is turn stagger. You just turn stagger the hell out of them until they waste their freaking turn. Uh, that's pretty much it. That's going to wrap it up for this video. So I will see you guys in the next boot camp video. We'll be going into more detail about what agents does what. And take it easy.